long time I've dreamed of having a wheelchair that's remote control. Something you can either use an RC transmitter like this with, or even something that will use the factory joystick on your wheelchair to control another wheelchair. Now there's a number of different ways of doing this using different technologies and different hardware. Uh, I'm going to, well, there's so many different things, I just decided to pick one and go with it. I've got an Arduino and I've got some spare joysticks that I can take apart. And for me, learning Python and other stuff, um, it's easier in my opinion to take some code that already exists, load it onto the Arduino, and then use that to simulate the joystick on the chair. So that's what we're doing. And this is just sort of the beginning of a bunch of different ways we can do this. I'm gonna be trying all the different methods I can possibly find and then see what works easiest. This arguably is probably the most difficult because you have to basically dismantle a joystick connect up a bunch of wires, do a bunch of tuning, and mess with software and stuff like that. But it is actually very, very doable and very easy to replace one of these with the Arnett joystick on your chair. All you need is an input-output module. That was actually another project I was gonna work on was replacing this thing with the joystick on my chair to drive an RC car. Now that's gonna be another completely separate thing, but there's a lot of cool stuff here to explore. And I had to start somewhere, so Let's just jump into it, and uh, we're gonna be staring at the workbench for a little while today. All right, full steam ahead here. We're working on the remote control power wheels or remote control wheelchair project, and I've determined that this joystick is the perfect one to use for the initial setup. The joystick gimbal on this one is separate from the circuit board, and it uses these wires to communicate with the rest of the chair. So what we're gonna be doing is connecting an Arduino to intercept these signals and inject voltage into these to make the controller think that the joystick is being moved around. Basically, an RC receiver is gonna to connect to the Arduino, the Arduino is gonna interpolate those signals, do some magic, and send some pixies dancing down these wires. Now, we have five, uh, six wires here. There's one for each direction the joystick can move, then there's a ground, and then there's a five volt power. Uh, I know the order they're supposed to be in once I know which end is ground and power, but I'm not sure which is which. So we're gonna use this meter here and probe this out to figure out which one's power and ground. Once I know where those are, it's pretty easy to um, determine the rest of it. I've got a mock wheelchair controller set up here. We've got a couple of motors. Uh, well, actually it's, it is a basically a complete power chair setup. So we're gonna use some adapters here and connect this joystick up to the controller, which is connected to those motors. Then we'll be able to power it on and be able to tell which pins are which. So we're gonna turn this thing on. And if we move the joystick, eh. and if I move the joystick, the motor should fire up. So there we go, the motors move And uh, basically all we need to do now is back probe these connectors and take a look at our voltmeter here to figure out which ones are power and ground. I believe, I was kind of looking at the circuit board and tracing it out. This first pin here is either power or ground. I can't tell which. The rest of them all connect to resistors and go to different places. But this first pin here connects to a bunch of different things. So that's either gonna be power or ground. And I know ground and power are right next to each other. So we'll just carefully probe this and see what our voltage is on the meter there. 4.99 volts. All right, perfect. And we don't have the negative flag on the meter, so that means pin one is five volts power, pin two is ground. All right, cool. Now we can turn this off. The Arduino kit comes with a whole bunch of uh, wiring and connectors and things like that. So I'm going to, let's see here. I think I'll probably use this jumper set here. I was just, I was just thinking. I could either cut the ends off of these and use these pins that stick out on the end because I'm gonna have to use a, uh, a breakout board or a breadboard to wire up some resistors and capacitors to smooth the signal that's coming out of the Arduino. And these things are designed to plug directly in here like so. I was just trying to think if I leave the joystick connected while the Arduino is connected, if that's gonna cause voltage drop, which it might do. Well, anyways, I was thinking I could pull that connector off and use 
you know, the other end of these to connect it up. But I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just, let me unplug this actually. So we have 24 volts going in there. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just strip back this harness here a little bit and I'm going to cut these wires in half so we have pins that I can stick into the breadboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these, solder these things on there, and then, uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Okay, that was actually a little easier than I thought it would be. I found some probe points underneath this connector, so all I had to do was pull the connector off and then solder on our interface cables directly to those probe points and then plug that back in and it seems to hold everything down. So, yeah, cool. Now we can uh, do some voltage checking on this. Although I probably should have put power and ground on there. And let me solder those on. Okay, we've got all our interface wires soldered up here now and we're gonna use the voltmeter to check and see what our voltage swing is on the system. I've got some alligator clips connected to the meter leads and this orange one here is our forward voltage. So it looks like we're sitting at 2.5 volts, which is what I was expecting. So we're gonna try going full forward and then full reverse and see what our total voltage swing is. A lot of these systems, it's about a volt, but they're all also slightly different. So let's go full forward. Yeah, looks like we've got four volts, 3.97, and then full reverse. Ah, it's one volt, interesting. So it goes from one to 2.5 for centering and then four for forward. Huh, let's try our left and right here. I'm gonna move down to this pin. So 2.44, 0 0.95, and 3.87. I know these controllers are pretty picky when they come to getting the voltages just right, especially when you're trying to emulate things with a board like this. And these things kind of have a PWM output, which is sort of a, a quick pulse. And I'm going to use a capacitor to smooth out all of that. So the PWM pulsing of this, which is a fairly high rate, in theory should be smoothed out. We're, we're heading in the right direction here. We're getting the voltages we need. So now I think at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and wire up my circuitry on the breadboard. And then go ahead and dump the scripts onto the Arduino and see what we get. Uh, yeah, fun stuff. Okay, we're getting really, 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 really close. Um, so I can accelerate and decelerate with the remote. It is definitely tripping a joystick fault though, if I do very much. Right now the turning is having an issue. Yeah, if I go too far on the turning, it trips and it won't work. Yeah, it seems to be when I let go of that channel. I do have a few different resistor values in here. I've been playing around with a few different things and um, it looks like 2.5 volts on each channel is about what it needs to actually fire up and work. I need to check the uh, capacitor and resistor values here. And uh, anyways, we're getting really close. Let's take a break from staring at that workbench and uh, open some mail. This one, uh, I know who it came from and I saw on the return address that it's from Just Coffee, Co Just Coffee Cooperative. I always wind up spoiling the surprise, although by shaking it you could tell. It's been a little while since I've tried any new exotic coffees or any of the past ones that I like a lot, so I'm super curious to see what's in here. Oh, I can smell it. What do we have here? Oh, it is something new, sweet. This is, hmm, the Phoenix 
dark chocolate flame orange zest. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. From Just Coffee Co-op, The Phoenix, dark chocolate and flamed orange zest. Single origin, brew to renew. I'm not sure what that means, but yeah, check it out. This is great. I actually just used up. I swear I'm not lying when I say this. Every time I get coffee, I feel like I say this, but I just used up the last of my coffee this morning. Um, the, the coffee normally sits right there, and as you can see, the glass beaker is empty. So, yeah. This saves me from having to go out and buy stuff. Plus, it's a new one that I haven't tried. I'm not even... I mean, I suppose I could go on the internet and order this stuff, but I'm far too lazy or efficient to do that. But yes, thank you for the coffee. I appreciate it. This next one, I'm gonna have to pretend that I've opened it because I already, I already did open it because I didn't realize somebody was sending me something. And then I had to look up and see what it was because I couldn't figure it out. Anybody know what this is? These are citrus peelers, more specifically for grapefruits. Um, I'm not 100% sure how they work. I don't know if these snap together. Um, oh, I see. I think that's the hook there to peel it with. So you can, uh, yeah, so you can kind of peel things with that. And then this part, I'm not sure. This looks like a grapefruit knife. It's got the little serrated edges on it. Um, oh, and it's got a peeler up here as well. Yeah, sweet. Um, I actually... I've been hankering for grapefruits recently. I was chatting with someone on Twitter about this and he was asking me if I'd ever heard of such a product and I metaphorically looked at him through the internet with a strange glance like he was a crazy person and I was like, I've never heard of such a thing. But here they are. He said he found some that worked good for him and he would send me a few. So yes, thank you. I'm gonna go buy some grapefruit now. Actually, oranges sound really good too. I'll have to be careful with oranges. The amount of sugar in those things is bad for my diet and or epilepsy or whatever. But anyways, let's go back to the wheelchair project. I believe we left off where I had gotten everything hooked up and it was basically working. And I wanted to do some testing to see how far I could go with the remote. So back to that. Okay, I've got you guys set up right here so you can keep an eye on what's going on. What I'm gonna do is grab the uh, remote here. I'm gonna leave this thing powered up and I'm gonna go run around outside. Now, this thing doesn't have a crazy range. It's got internal antennas. This actually came off of my little axial, axial rock crawler truck. And the reason I upgraded was I wanted to quadruple the range on it. So, um, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave you guys sitting there so you can watch this. And then um, I'm going to head outside and see what kind of range we're getting. And I'm gonna overlay the recordings on both of these. Yeah, we need to uh, synchronize audio. Okay, so looks like we're still working. So I'm just gonna keep keep driving this thing and pushing the button with one hand, and we're gonna head outside and see how far away we get. I'm just basically pulling the trigger and then letting go every few seconds. Actually, you can still hear the brakes clicking in there. All right, let's see if we still get a click. No click, something happened. Luckily I'll be able to go through the video and see exactly what I was doing when that happened. Yep, there we go. See, it says joystick fault. So usually you reset the Arduino and then just power cycle the chair and it should recover and be fine. There we go. Back up and running. Well, I needed a few more components and 
even though Fry's Electronics is slowly dying, they do still have electronic components. So we came down here and uh, we're gonna see if we can get some 4.7K resistors and one microfarad capacitors. I don't know if I need low ESR ones or not, but we'll see what they have in stock. I don't think it necessarily matters. Five dollars worth of stuff. Got some of the uh, one microfarad capacitors. They're not low, e low ESR, but that's okay. They were out of the quarter watt resistors, so I had to get the eighth watt ones. But we're just dealing with data lines, so I think we should be good. It's uh, 4.7 ohm, but yeah, um, I think we are ready to continue the RC project and hopefully get it to be a little bit more reliable. Now, when I was first looking at this schematic it wasn't making a whole lot of sense to me as to what was going on. Because there was a bunch of resistors and capacitors that didn't have their grounds connected to anything. And I just assumed that the person left that off of the schematic. But as it turns out, connecting the grounds made it not work. And I just dropped one of these. Where did it go? These little eighth watt resistors are almost microscopic. <laughs> so we're gonna rip out these old capacitors I had two of one value and two of another, but, well, for the snubber network to work properly, we need to have the uh, same value capacitors. So we're gonna rip those out, rip out these resistors too, cause these are the wrong value. After I figured out what was going on, I was like, oh, this all makes sense now. I'm gonna load up all the new components on this board and then I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll do a test. Why are we not getting voltage across here? Well, let's power it up and see what it does. Oh, it says ready to drive. And then we immediately get an error. Reset the Arduino. Reboot the joystick. And immediate error. So I just switched back to the other resistors. It turns out I bought the wrong one. I needed 4.7 kilo ohms. This is 4.7 ohm. So, yeah. At least we have all the same electrolytic capacitors now. They're all the same value. And I swapped back in the, let's see, I think those were 2K resistors. No, 5K resistors. But we seem to be working now. And then we can turn at the same time. All right, cool, I think we're good. These, these old electrolytic capacitors I was using, these were out of a kit that was from like the mid 90s, so I don't know if they dried out and half of them were different values. Anyways, uh, I think we're good. I'm going to keep playing around with this, make sure we don't get any errors, and then I think we might be ready to actually put this on a circuit board and uh, do some testing. Yeah, we're not getting any errors. All right, let me turn this off real quick. And the turning speed, I had to attenuate a little bit. So let me, let's bring the meter back in here. And we're going to adjust this transmitter for the maximum voltage that the Arduino can accept when it's turning. Okay, 2.4, the max of 3.3, minimum of 1.8. So let's turn our trim up just a little, or no, not trim, sensitivity. We'll crank that up a little more. Yeah, see if we go too far, then um, the voltage coming out of the uh, thing isn't recognized by the Arduino. You see it raises up, up, up. And then when we get past 3.3 or 3.4, I believe. 
yeah, past 3.3 and a half, it drops back down. So we've got to tune that down. 3.33. I'm going to go 3.2 just to give it a margin of error. There we go. And then let's try the other channel. I know a lot of this probably isn't making sense. <laughs> 1.7, 3.1. All right, cool, that'll do. We have proof of concept at this point. We know this set setup is capable of controlling the joystick and the motors. Right now though, I'm having some issues. I don't know if it's with this transmitter getting interference or if it's because of the breadboard with all these super loose connections or what exactly is going on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this joystick and actually take this harness apart and we're going to solder all these wires that are color coded onto here. I thought originally that I could just use these probe points and solder everything on there, but then I realized this has to be connected. And when all this is connected, we're trying to power up these little coils in here, so that's gonna throw our voltage off and make it all screwy. So what I'm gonna do right now, since these wires are all unlabeled, I'm gonna go grab my rainbow of Sharpies, and I'm going to color each one of these so I don't get them confused. Then we're gonna start soldering each one of these. We're gonna pull these all off and get these installed because there's sort of a standard color code that apparently is being used for this whole thing and uh, well at least that's what I have written down in the schematics so anyways let's go take care of this yes I'm so domesticated I have the I have this little uh, box of all the different sharpies and colors wow look at all the dirt on the lens I'm using a different camera for some reason but yeah I've got paint markers ballpoint pens like all kinds of stuff and there's a whole bunch more stuff down in that cabinet but yeah I figure these are handy to throw on the floor okay arts and crafts session is done I've gotten this uh, connector pulled completely out of the joystick got the colors on there I also went ahead and marked color stripes on this connector because I'm going to be desoldering these then this will basically plug in down here and we'll have our little wire sticking out. I'm going to clip off this connector. This is the joystick off of the pink soccer chair. Uh, this was actually off of the very first power chair I ever had. But I think it's a good one to donate to science. I'm not going to be completely destroying it. I have plenty more of these things if we do mess up parts in it. But I know this one works. And it's from a chair that kind of got destroyed. So anyways. Uh, let's forge on with this. I'm going to fire up the soldering iron and uh, we're going to make some little custom harness thingies. Fast forward a little while. I've got a cable made up here and we've got the, uh, the pin sticking out on the end so I can still interface with the breadboard for now. But I wanted to uh, get this hard connected to the joystick and try to eliminate as many connection points as possible. And I'm probably going to rewire this breadboard a little bit and eliminate some connections as well. But we've got all the color codes here. And I took a triangular file and notched a little hole inside of this. So potentially now we should be able to connect this up and put the lid back on. Yeah, it looks like our connector's in there. Hey, what do you know? It actually closes. Sweet. I think two screws in the middle should be good for now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and rearrange some stuff here since the wires are now coming out of this side. I figure the joystick's gonna be on the right on the chair and I want all the electronics to be sitting in the chair. Uh, or, I don't know. At least it seems like if the wires are coming out over here, they would probably hit on stuff more. But anyways, I'm gonna rearrange some of this stuff and then uh, we'll power this up and give it a test. I've eliminated a set of jumper wires and connected everything up here. Let's plug the joystick back into the controller and turn on our RC controller. Power up the Arduino. The light on the receiver here indicates that the, uh, the controller and the receiver are linked. The red lights both turn on at the same time. Now let me verify my wiring here real quick. Looks like we're good. All right, let's go ahead and power this thing up, see what we get. Okay, it says ready to drive. Let's see if I can pick up the remote and move it around. Sometimes when I do that, it causes an error. All right. Hey, it says we're driving. Let's try going backwards. 
trimming backwards just fine. Now I have found out it's a little bit touchy if you let go of the control super quick and it snaps back because it has a spring in there. I don't know how fast the interrupt signal is on the Arduino or the PWM stuff. So all of these four channels, basically you've got two channels monitoring forward and back, two channels monitoring left and right. And if the voltage signals are not exactly matched, like one goes up exactly as the other one goes down, uh, it's gonna cause an issue that this joystick is gonna throw a fault. So I think turning slowly uh, should be good. And then I slowly let go and then turn the other way. Seems like we're good. I'm gonna try full speed on this. Now if I let go, let's see if it throws an error. Hey, it looks like we're good. Let's go the other way. And we'll let go. Cool, maybe uh, removing a bunch of the extra connections actually helped us out. Yeah, we're not throwing any errors. All right, let's combine all four channels. Cool, okay, I'm super happy. I was just hammering on this thing and, well here, let's. <laughs> no errors, yes, I am so happy right now. We got this little green bar down here on the bottom and when it throws an error, that'll turn yellow and say joystick fault, but um, it seems like I can pretty much do whatever and it uh, seems like we're good to go. <laughs> okay, um, super happy with this thing. Uh, <laughs> I never thought I would actually make some real progress. Well, I mean, I know I would eventually, but I'm like super unmotivated at times. But we're gonna hook this thing up out here on this little uh, golden, I don't think it's a compass. It's some model of chair. That's one with the super weird joystick. Now this is the controller from inside, the MK690. Now you might be wondering, how's that gonna work? This joystick's not compatible. It has different connectors. Plus it's a different brand of chair. Well, luckily for us, Dynamic Controls makes Invocare stuff. It doesn't say it on there. But if we look at the motor connectors, they are twins. You can tell Invocare connectors because the, uh, the brake um, pins are like round. And yeah, so all I'm gonna do right now, this is the old controller right here. You can see the white thing on the top where all the wires are connected. Instead of just dangling this off of here, I'm actually gonna pull the bolts. And these things are basically the same width. And there are some screws on here, so we should be able to just rip this thing off using a socket of some random size. So let's rip this thing off of here jam the new one on and uh, see if we can go do some burnouts. Metaphorical burnouts, of course, or unattended burnouts. Unattended? Not unintended, but unattended, as in I shall not be sitting in this thing. Or apparently it does fit just fine. But just fine, I mean just barely. Let's uh, plug in our motors. Here we go. Power. And the other motor. And this is not going to connect because that's for the old joystick that we're not using at the moment. So, yeah, there we go. Quality. Yeah, let me go back inside and we'll uh, grab the rest of the stuff and hook it up. Okay, it's all connected in a super precarious way. Oh, I just noticed there's a big old dent on my lithium or lipo battery pack. That's no good. Um, so, I've wrapped the cord around the headrest a couple of times. Comes back down here, plugs into the controller, and the rest of everything else is just kind of sitting up here. So, um, what do you say we power it up and see if we can break a bunch of stuff in here? So let's turn this guy on. That thing's powered up now, we got the receiver on. Also, these motors are way smaller. This controller was set up for massive four-pole motors on like a 200-pound person. So this might get interesting. Let's uh, fire it up. Says ready to drive. 
Shall we try them back up? Oh boy. So let's turn this onto a slower profile. And apparently for whatever reason, backing up was more like turning. Oh, we got our outputs reversed. That's what happened. Okay, that's actually really easy to fix. While I was moving everything around earlier, I wasn't sure if I connected these channels back up correctly. So we just have to switch these two wires here. There we go. Now, can reset the Arduino. Okay, turn our chair back on. It's set on a slow profile, but again, incorrect motors. So let's see what reverse does. It's backing up. Oh my gosh, it's working. What is this insanity? Okay, looks like we got a fault. This breadboard's kind of weird and a little bit loose. So I'm gonna make sure all of our components are in here. Okay, ready to drive. Let's see if it turns. <laughs> oh, and we've got an error code. Um, it's entirely possible that I've bumped the uh, trim pots on this coming out here. Okay, well, I'm going to screw around with this a little bit more. Um, like I said, we're still using a breadboard and these components are a little bit weird and I did just move everything and insert excuses here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to play around with this and then I'll be back. Yeah, as I thought, the problem we're having here is with the trim pot on this thing. If you look at our voltage, it's going kind of nuts. I think I'm gonna go inside and rip the RC receiver off of the Axial truck because it has a proper remote. I mean, this thing's pretty cheaply made and it's got analog trim on this one with these little knobs you turn. The other one has digital trim and it's designed for RC airplanes, so it's much more precise. So I'm gonna go grab that real quick and we're basically gonna replace this little guy and this remote with a proper RC setup and I believe that should take care of some of the issues that we're having here. Okay, after a little bit of screwing around, the swap has been done. We've got a six channel receiver on here now that actually has proper antennas. And I don't know how many hundreds of yards of range this thing has, but it does have one thing that could be used as a feature. The travel that this joystick goes is further than the voltage that the Arduino is expecting to see. So if I push this too far or all the way in any direction, it's gonna put it into a fault mode. So in theory, we should be able to use that as sort of a fail safe. But let's uh, see here. Okay, so we've got forward, got reverse, left, and right. I think if we go full steering in any direction, it should trigger a fault, I believe. Oh, it's not. Oh, there we go. Now we triggered a fault. So if something happens and it stops responding, all I need to do is just go nuts on this joystick and uh, it should trigger a fault and make the thing stop. All right, let's take it out in the driveway and see what happens. I'm gonna set the camera down somewhere well out of the way because this might get interesting. And we triggered a fault. Focus, focus. Hey, um, I'm gonna grab the multimeter and uh, make sure the trim is adjusted properly on this. And then do some more playing around. So where does that leave us? Well, right now, this thing technically works. There's a few bugs I need to work out on it. The way I'm controlling this thing is not, not like a typical setup where you just read the RC receiver channels. The receiver from the RC controller is putting out um, 
sort of a, PW, a PWM digital signal. Uh, it's not even really PWM. It's, uh, it's basically a carrier wave with a bunch of digital spikes on it. And the way I set it up, instead of reading each channel individually, is it's pulling the serial data in from that thing and looking for the different spikes and the different widths of the signals and all that. And it's being processed using an interrupt on the Arduino. It's a much more efficient way to do it without running the Arduino at maximum speed. Because that thing performs like, what is it, 30,000 or 64,000 operations per second. And it'd be really easy to load everything down with all of the signal. Anyways, I sell that to say the way I'm doing it is not exactly standard. Therefore, there's a few changes that need to be made in the code on it to get things work properly. It's working for now. Uh, proof of concept's good. We've got a chair that it's mounted to and it's able to drive around. If you max out the uh, joystick control in any direction, it will trip a code. I am noticing though when it does that, the, the voltage goes up and if you go too far, then it starts dropping off. And I believe that comes down to reading the uh, serial signal, or I'm not sure what to call it. It's not PWM, but uh, anyways, there's troubles with it reading it, and that comes down to the code being used. There's another way of doing this using a Raspberry Pi instead of an Arduino, and actually connecting to the chair through the CAN bus. So you wouldn't have to set up all these wires and everything. There's basically two connectors that you connect, and then, yeah, you don't have to solder on things with a joystick and whatnot. It's not like I need stuff to do or being stuck at home, but... It definitely helps at times when there's a project you can work on that will use days at a time. You get into the zone on this and time just flies by and then suddenly it's like, wait, it's Tuesday again? <laughs> there you go. Things working. Ish. And uh, we'll, we'll keep pressing forward. I'm probably going to give this a little bit of a break because my head still hurts and we'll pick it back up at a later time in maybe, I don't know, another week or so. I don't know. Don't never quote me to times. I, I'm never accurate with that. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in a few days. Bye.